Today I want to show you how to bake bread in jars. And if you do it right, you can make your bread last for up to six months in these jars. There are a couple of things you need to be aware of. I will tell you while I'm doing this video. The bread I'm baking today is a hearty bread, although it contains figs and walnuts. So here's what you need. You need some whole wheat flour, some spelt flour, some rye flour. I'm using dark rye flour here. You need buttermilk and molasses. And for reference, I have this bottle here for you. Then you need some salt, seven grams of yeast, which is usually one package, and some figs and walnuts. The quantities are like always on my blog and the blog post link is at the very end of this video and you can switch between the metric and the US customary measurements in that blog post. I start with the buttermilk. I have to warm it up a little bit. And while I'm warming that up, I'm also adding the molasses and the salt. This entire tablespoon of salt going in there. All right, this goes onto the stove now. Okay, so this is just slightly warm. It has like baby bath temperature, so about, um, yeah, body temperature, I would say. If you make it too hot, you will kill your yeast. That's not what you're planning to do. So this is, as I said, just a little bit warm. And I'm adding the yeast on top. And I let this stand for a couple of minutes. Now in the meantime, I'm mixing the flour. So this is the whole wheat flour and the spelt flour and the rye flour. Okay, put this aside. Now I'm cutting the figs into smaller pieces. Like this. And sometimes there's a little stem on the top, you have to remove that one. Now the nuts that I have here, they are already kind of not really chopped, but they are not in one piece anymore. So I can leave them as they are. If you have um, whole pieces of walnuts, you just have to chop them a little bit. Okay, so let's see how our yeast is doing. I think I can mix it in a little bit. And this can go now onto the flour. All right. And like always with bread, it has to be kneaded for a longer time, like about 10 minutes. So at the end of the kneading time, I'm adding the walnuts and also the figs to the dough. Okay, and I set this aside. And I want to talk a little bit about the jars that I'm using. So the bread in the jars um, need certain jars that will work for it and I want to show you which one won't work. So glasses or jars like this that have some sort of like a shoulder here and become more narrow at the opening, they won't work. You will never get the bread out there and you will never spoon it out of this because that's not what we do with bread, right? So same with this one. Looks nice but is narrow on the top. 
so this won't work. If you have a gem glass like this one that is just straight or even just a little narrow on the on the bottom end and wider on the top, this will perfectly work. So you could use that. Um, I'm using these ball jars that are also straight in their shape and um, yeah these are perfect for this um, project. Now when it comes to preparing the jars um, some people use oil. I prefer to use some butter to grease them and then I'll also put some flour inside. This makes it easier to get the bread out later so it will slip right out of the jars. Then you should also be aware that when before you bake the bread you should really clean the rim so that later the lid will go on perfectly and fit perfectly and will not let in any air. So this is for the preparation of the jars. I will talk about some other things you have to be aware of a little later. Now let me show you how I prepare the jars. So I will just grease them inside. By the way, don't mind me if I say glass instead of jar. It's the word we use in Germany. It's, um, yeah, it's, since it's the material is glass, we call it a glass. And sometimes I forget that it's a jar in English. You can see I cover it all the way. Also here on the top, but not outside. Make sure this stays clean. And I'm taking a little bit of flour and I put it in. I'm making sure that it goes everywhere. If I see like here, you can probably see it. Apparently there is no butter here. So let me fix that. All right, next one. Now that I've prepared the jars, I have to fill in the dough. And uh, that's a little bit tricky because I of course don't want to remove the uh, flour that I put on the jars inside. I want this to stay where it is, so I have to be a bit careful and just glide it in there. I can have a little more here. I'm filling these jars about half. Um, I will leave some space for proofing. And then there's also the oven spring where the bread also rises a little more in the oven. Since there is some rye flour in this recipe, it will not um, prove as much as most of the other breads that are just with white flour. But um, if you want to be on the safe side, um, just go for like yeah half the jar. If the bread goes over the rim of the jar, it's not a big deal. You can just cut it off, but it's nicer to have it right in the correct amount in it. Let's take a look. Well, as expected, it didn't rise very much during the proofing time because it's a heavy dough with a lot of um, weight and also with some rye. Uh, that's okay. Now, this has to go into the oven. Very important is that you do not put it onto a hot sheet in the oven. You should put it into a casserole or something like that with some water in it. and then put that into the oven. Also make sure that the rim of your jar is really, really clean. I go around here just one more time to make sure of that. And now it goes into the oven with a rather low temperature. So I'm baking it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And it stays in the oven for a longer time. Now it depends of course on the size of your jars for how long you have to bake your bread. So to find out when your bread is done you're using a digital or analog thermometer and you measure the center temperature of your bread and when it has reached a degree of 200 degree Fahrenheit or 95 degrees Celsius then your bread is done and you can take it out. 
So this took about an hour and uh, once the bread had the correct temperature of 95 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit, um, I let the bread cool a little bit in the oven. I opened the oven door a tiny bit so that uh, the steam could get out. And uh, this way I can now close these jars without the steam um, creating any liquid on the bottom of the lids. So that's important and I just first loosely screw them on here. So if I would close the jar now entirely just like with my hands here and put this away, it would be good for about two weeks. But if I want this to last almost or about six months, then I will have to get one more step done. I have to put this into a pot. I was hoping I could get another one in here uh, with some water. I put a small cloth on the bottom so that the glasses won't make too much noise when it's boiling. So I put this onto the stove now and I boil this for about 30 minutes and then just let it cool. And after that it's done. So let me quickly put this on the stove and I want to try the smaller one of these breads. So let's see if it glides out. Probably not. Oh, oh yeah. Just need it a moment. So here you see the bread. Can I touch it? Yeah. And let me cut this open. And this is what it looks like. So if you open a jar and it's not fresh from the oven and you want this to have a little bit of a crust, you just take it out and you bake it for a couple of minutes in the hot oven to get a little bit of a crust of this bread and then you have like a fresh baked bread. So I'll put some butter on here and then I'll try it. Well, I'll take the side with the nut and the fig. No. Oh. Fantastic. It's absolutely delicious. So the fig and the walnuts, they are just a great combination with this bread. Mm. You basically only need some butter on this, but you can of course pair it with whatever you want. It can be something sweet, it can be something hearty. It will taste anyway. It's really, really good. So you can already hear the jars in the back probably and I'm making a little bit of a noise because they're cooking. So I will finish that and put this away and then I have bread for like the next six months to keep on the shelf. And whenever I need a bread, I can just get one of my jars. So I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell button if you enjoyed this video. If you want to help me with this project, pay some attention to the donation button and I hope you watch some more of my videos. Thank you for being part of my German food community and I hope you tune in next time I publish a new video.